I'm sorry, I, Moist Critical has kind of inspired me to get one of these, and I did for like 10 bucks on Amazon. It doesn't even shoot actual bullets, it's just a toy, really. It doesn't even shoot anything, to be honest. But I'll tell you what, I definitely know what a clip and a magazine is on a gun, that's for damn short. On this channel, what do you guys know me for? You guys know me for VTubers, and you guys know me for, well, hopefully, fighting games. And I always get thrilled when both of my worlds collide in some spectacular way. Now, a couple months ago, there was an event that I completely missed out on, and I'm making a video on it now, but like they always say, better late than never. So here I am making a video about Corone playing Street Fighter V, a game that I got into back when it first came out in 2016. I competed in, I went to casuals, I went to locals, participated in many different events, and uh, I kind of want to make a video on it. Now, I'm no authority in Street Fighter V or anything like that, but I do know my way around it. And when I heard that Corone was training up to be a world warrior, I had to witness it myself. By the way, I'm also filming this video without any pants on. I think that's going to be tradition from now on, so if you see a video without Twitch chat, probably means that I don't have any pants on. Now, when it comes to the genre of fighting games, it's a very interesting topic to talk about outside of the dedicated community that plays them. It's a very niche genre of games because it was born in an arcade. It was a very old school and raggedy way of playing video games back in the day. Queuing up at an arcade, wherever it was, 7-Eleven, Chinatown fairs, old laundromats. You put in a quarter and you queue up to beat up against somebody that's right there in front of you. There was no microphones. There was no internet. Internet, they were literally right there and because of that there's a very grassroots feel to fighting games smack talking friendly banter and the get good mentality was spawned from environments like this fast forward to now things are a lot different consoles are thriving more than ever there's a plethora of fighting games coming out and there's big influencers that are trying out fighting games for the very first time hell not too long ago there was a twitch rivals that occurred with street fighter 5 where they had big streamers pair up with coaches and they had to train them in order to be able to compete in a tournament. And it was point, click, shoot, mad easy, mad fucking easy. You can watch literally a 10 minute tutorial how to do it, but not have to be frame fucking perfect. Can we just go back to fucking 1999 where I can literally just doom, doom, doom and do crazy fucking combos with my forehead? And now we have Corone-san playing Street Fighter V. Now, how was her experience? Let me recap it for you for those of you who are interested. Now, in the span of the entire Street Fighter V adventure, she did around five, six streams of Street Fighter V. And normally with these type of events and such, and I'm making a video about them, I go through every single VOD to be able to see what my favorite highlights were, even though I don't really understand what she's saying. But thankfully, because this is Corone, there's a lot of clippers out there. Now, this doesn't usually happen with most VTubers, but with Corone, it's always gonna happen. So there is a plethora of many many clips out there of her playing reacting and basically just making my job easier now my objective here is to take most of these clips and compile a video for you guys to digest and hopefully i can provide some context when it comes to most of these highlights i'll tell you guys about peripherals character history certain characters in the game that you probably didn't know about and if you do you're probably a fellow fighting gamer like me and hopefully you guys enjoy me going through corona's adventure and explaining a lot of things to you yeah あ、コリちゃんの配信を見て。Now first, I'd like to highlight the whole controller debate. This is an arcade stick. More in particular, this is my arcade stick. It's basically a big old $400 peripheral that I spent a lot of money on because reasons. Now, not a lot of these fight sticks are that expensive, but this one is because I'm insane. Now, do you need to buy an arcade stick to enjoy fighting games? No. Some of the greatest fighting game players of all time are pad players. You may not know this, but this is a huge debate in the fighting game community, whether or not you need a peripheral to be able to succeed. I'll give you the short answer. No, you don't. Now, arcade sticks and PlayStation or Xbox controllers are actually a smaller part of the peripheral discussion. There is a larger one that I'm not going to get into. That brings up another peripheral that exists, and that is the hit. 
Well, I shouldn't really call it a hitbox. Hitbox is a brand, but the peripheral is called a leverless controller. This is a leverless controller. Essentially, you take away the lever and you put in buttons. Now, the directional buttons are laid out in a way for you to comfortably pick up the game and play the game after some use. Just like with the arcade stick, this takes some time to master and to get used to. And if you do, some say that it is better than an arcade stick. Comfortability is a huge factor with this thing because you don't use your wrist all the time. And because of that, in the long run, this definitely pulls out over the arcades. And also because you're not using a wrist, you also get better execution. Instead of relying on the flick of the wrist, click of a button. Anyways, that's the hitbox. But if you're like me and you like to enjoy fighting games in its purest form, then I suggest getting a arcade stick. And they're much cheaper ones, don't worry. This one's a $400 one. I'm me and you're too. You can buy one for like a hundred bucks. If you don't got money, don't worry about it. It was really great that her audience was actually bringing up these peripherals and just that discussion in general was really cool for me to hear coming out of Corona's mouth. I don't know, there's just something about it that seems surreal. Let me go ahead and divide Corona's experience in two different sections. The first section being the single player and or her first experience playing this game. Now, what do you do when you boot up a fighting game for the first time and you don't know what you're doing, but you wanna learn more about the game? You go to the different types of modes that the game offers you, primarily training mode so you can see all the characters. I remember seeing her go through trials mode live and it was some of the funnest content that I've seen in a very long time. Her trying to do combos in Street Fighter V reminded me of when I was a young Sprout wanting to do a specific combo because I've seen it on a match or I've seen someone else do it on a YouTube video. And of course, with those trials modes, that sweet sense of accomplishment whenever you get the combo. Do damn boom boom. Do damn boom boom. It's so cool, man. It seems like Bison was the one that stuck out to her. And that's really cool because Bison was my first character that I picked up in Street Fighter V. And I played Bison in Street Fighter IV as well. But Street Fighter V Bison, there was something about him that really uh, tickled my fancy. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's the Japanese voice actor, which I love so much, or if it's his gameplay or both, who knows? But let's just say that I was very happy that she picked up Bison and thought, yep, this is my guy. That is my dude. That's my main chicken. So she decided to go to the story mode, not the cinematic one, but the individual character story modes and decided to try out the characters like that. But as I sat there and watched Corona go through all of the different story modes for the characters, I completely we really forgot as to how dog shit Street Fighter V was during launch. Quite possibly one of the worst launches that I've ever seen a video game have. And that's saying something. Arcade edition of Street Fighter V is the best version of Street Fighter V. And if that this version came out back in the day, oh my god, this could have been one of the greatest fighting games of all time. But it's people like me that remember, never forget the launch of Street Fighter V. It really wasn't until they started adding characters, new modes, new mechanics, and just quality of life things that made the game what it is today. And back in the day, God, it was like the the thing to dog on Street Fighter V. Now, I can't do that anymore. I mean, you can still dog on it. I mean, you can dog on anything, really. But the game is genuinely really, really good. And I am very glad that Corone got to play the best version of Street Fighter V rather than the version we got back in the day. Anyways, as she was playing with the character story modes, I was having a blast having her go through different characters and seeing which one she really resonated with, which was really fun. These next two clips are definitely some of my favorite ones, so check these out. Now Mika was a character that came out during launch and I remember when I first saw her super that was definitely one of the more shocking supers that I know a lot of people would definitely enjoy to watch even if outside of the fighting game community and then an unlocked memory just happened to I completely forgot that they nerfed this super. Back in the day, the camera angle panned down to her ass being slapped. They nerfed see her upper back, but we all know that she's slapping her ass. Anyways, here's an uncensored version of the super.
Yeah, I definitely put this up there as one of gaming's worst tragedies, right next to Snake's ass being nerfed in Smash Ultimate. So as she was going through, she stumbled across Akuma, which if you don't know, is a very, very popular character. One of the most popular things about this character is his super move called the Raging Demon. Now the Raging Demon is a very intricate input that requires four button presses and some direction. And Corone was able to succeed in inputting the Raging Demon and uh, getting really excited about it. Now the Raging Demon has been around for a very long, long time. There's actually a secret shortcut to executing this Raging Demon. And I'm about to show you really quick. All right, so I got Street Fighter V booted up. I got a little bit of a hand cam thing going on right now, which is pretty great. I hope you guys like it. But uh, when it comes to the shortcut, let's go ahead and talk about the regular Raging Demon. You activate his V-Trigger, which is just like another mode. And then you do the input, which is light punch, light punch, forward light kick into heavy punch. Oh, whoops. There it is. Just like that. That's like do his Raging Demon. Now it is four inputs to be able to do this, but you can shorten it down to just three. So if you do this and you just do the forward light kick and the heavy punch at the same time, you can shorten it down like that. So anyways, that was a cute little thing I wanted to show you guys. Fighting games are littered with stuff like that. So just to let you know, but the fact that she got it the normal way is absolutely fantastic big shout out to corona for getting that raging demon so after all the different story mode stuff she decided to stick with bison like i mentioned before which made me happy but also kind of surprised so bison is a charge character and the general consensus around charge characters is that they're hard therefore people don't like picking them up at first which made me respect corona way more for those of you who don't know there's multiple types of characters with multiple types of inputs to be able to execute special moves so for example there's charge characters, which means you have to hold the direction for a certain amount of time and then release it and or go the opposite direction and press a button to be able to execute that special move, aka Bison's scissor kicks. Or you have motion inputs, which is the one that most people know, where you do a quarter circle forward and a button and you get a Hadouken, for example. And those are usually the easiest. So I just want to give a plus one to the dog because, you know, she decided to start off with a charge character rather than a motion character. Granted, he has motion inputs, but nonetheless, he's a charge character. And with the dictator and bison in hand, she went online to face off against her viewers. And there were some great, great moments there. Now, I also wanted to mention Bison's name. As you know, I'm calling him M. Bison, but in the game that she's playing, which is the Japanese version, it's called Vega. Now, for those of you who don't know, the characters' names were switched back in Street Fighter 2 when they were importing the game from Japan. Three characters in particular, Vega, M. Bison, and Balrog. Now, to make this simple, I'm just going to go ahead and say their names and their counterparts and just move on. M. Bison, aka Dictator, was called Vega in Japan. Balrog, aka Boxer, was called M. Bison. And Vega, aka Claw, was called Balrog. Anyways, now you know. Oh, and then Akuma is called Goki in Japan. Just to let you know about that one too. Now why they changed all their names? Ugh, reasons that I don't want to explain right now because this video is already too long. Anyway, so the first match that I wanted to highlight was her match with a Zangief player. And it wasn't until this match that I realized how ridiculous and how funny some of the shit that is in this game is. Zangief is a big old burly grappler character that all he wants to do is get in and grab you. But there's a lot of things in this game that prevent him from doing that. So they gave him a tool to be able to get through specific projectiles and get through different obstacles for him to get up close to you. I'm talking about the flex. And what it does is that he flexes his muscles, he turns red, he looks at you real close in the eye and says, come at me, brother. Now he has infinite armor, unless you throw a super at him or grab him. And if you hold forward, you can just walk through. And that walk is really funny. A lot of competitive players use this move to be able to armor through specific moves and or projectiles. And if you tap it, you can cancel out of it really easily. But if you hold it, you can just stay there and once you're in that position once you let go of it he does this flexing move that has a hitbox that can hit you but if you keep holding it and hold forward you get that walk and hilarity ensues
anyways, you could tell that the guy was trolling or trying to show off the character because he was also playing V-Trigger 2. Now, the practicalities of V-Trigger 2, I'll, I'm not going to go into, but they do unlock like an announcer. And I know that Japan is huge on wrestling, so I'm pretty sure they wanted to show that off with Zangief. <laughs> So that Zangief player was an absolute sport. Went easy on her, kind of fooled around a little bit, let Corona do her thing, react to Zangief's shenanigans. And at the end of the day, Corona was able to take that W. Now, the second match was versus a Rashid player, and he was using the Airman costume. If you guys don't know, Rashid is a character that's from the Middle East that controls the wind. Therefore, Capcom made an Airman costume for him, which was really cool. So to be able to show that off to Corona was really fun. It's a couple things that made me kind of interested in Corona's playstyle. She was using V-Skill 2 with Dictator, which is a very easy V-Skill to use. It's essentially a V-Skill where they teleport behind you, homes in on you, and knees you in the face where you are at an advantage. I'm not going to get into the details. If you block it, you're in trouble. If you get hit, you're in trouble because she can get a combo after that. But it's a very easy V-Skill to use compared to the other V-Skill, which is primarily a V-Skill that no projectiles in practicality that is the better v skill but v skill 2 is definitely a lot easier to use for beginner players i really like this match in particular because she was punishing specific things that the rashid player was doing and she was doing combos i was genuinely surprised doing her cancels doing her buffers so that is a w for the dog Now, this third match I really loved because this really encapsulates fighting games in a nutshell. I thought that she wasn't going to get upset or salty and or rage. I knew she wasn't going to do that, but we got very close to seeing Salty Corone. And that was when she fought against the Dan player. Now, Dan is the quintessential troll character because that character was made as a parody and as a way to be able to annoy players. He's got like three to four different taunts depending on his toolkit, and he's just all around like a funny ass character. So the fact that this player went up, played Dan, and started just going ham on the insults and the taunting, but it's not necessarily like disrespectful, it's just how the character is. <laughs> and because of this Dan player, we got a clip of the thing. You know, the thing. That's right, she said baka. It was like watching anime right in front of my eyes. Of course, I could just boot up Crunchyroll and do that, but dude, this was way better. <laughs> Anyways, Dan pissed her off. She got salty. It was awesome. It was adorable. It was cute. Of course, it was all in good fun. But uh, I just know that she kicked him right the hell out, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> now, the final match that I wanted to highlight was the match versus the competitive Mika player. Now, I knew this was going to happen as soon as she got access to playing against her viewers. <laughs> But she, of course, opened up the doors, opened the floodgates, and you know, it was bound to happen that a shark, an apex predator, was gonna wander into the pool, and she had to try to get rid of it. And it was a Mika player. ねえ。何やこれ。ねえ。ね。
on no. She got double peed on, but she looked like she was having fun. I will say this right now, Mika in general is a very, very crazy character to try to tame. Mika is kind of a hybrid grappler, which means that she is a grappler. Same thing as Zangief, but much more mobile. Now she has her pros and cons, obviously, but it makes her play style very, very nutty. I'll tell you right now, every time Amika shows up in my queue, I just roll my eyes and say, Oh shit. Here we go again. At the end of the match, she definitely got a taste as to how competitive Street Fighter was supposed to be played. And it's one thing to watch it, it's another thing to experience it. The movement is different, combos, setups, Oki, all those different terms that you don't know, don't worry. That's what happens when you get to mess with a Grandmaster player. And with that, that's it. That's all I really wanted to say. This video has gone on for long enough. I don't know how to end this, other than to go subscribe to Corona if you haven't already. Oh, and uh, should subscribe to somebody else too i mean if you made it far enough into this video you you owe me also let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this i wouldn't mind making videos i know that there's plenty of other vtubers in the hollow life community and in the niji sanji community that also play fighting game i know that there was a hollow stars member that played melty blood and other games and i know that miko played soul caliber 6 i can definitely make more videos like this i had a lot of fun with doing it i know that she recently played another fighting game i don't know if it was guilty gear strive or something else i don't remember but uh yeah let me know all right guys um yeah that's it uh bye bye now